Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have uh, an interesting car in the shop. It was brought to me all the way from Harrisburg by a YouTube fan. Let's see what we have here. It is a 2006 Suzuki something. What is this thing? A Forenza. Don't see too many of these. But it's not really a Suzuki because it says GM Daewoo Auto and Technology Corporation and it's made in Korea so I, <laughs> it's like GM Daewoo Suzuki no one knew uh, who was gonna sell it who was gonna make it um, nevertheless it's here for a check engine light one code stored let's see what it is This thing is a stick shift, that's one redeeming feature, I guess. I'm going to scan it for codes, just one code stored in the engine. P0340, camshaft position, sensor A, circuit, bank one, or single sensor. Cool. So now, uh, the symptoms. Customer said that it drives fine when you're not really on the gas. When you give it gas, check engine light comes on, it loses power. Uh, just not fun to drive uh, on the way here. He said it ran pretty well So but you know check engine lights still on so hopefully we can recreate this problem and figure out what's wrong Where do we want to start? Well, let's go to our Engine menu I just want to read up on the P0340 There it is So CMP is used to correlate crankshaft to camshaft position so that ECM can determine which cylinder is ready to be fueled by the injector. Uh, CPM is determined which cylinder is misfiring, misfire is present uh, when the ECM cannot use the information from the CMP sensor. The diagnostic trouble code is set and the ECM will fuel the engine using alternate synchronous double fire method ASDF. Got it? On the floor I see the uh, that looks like a PCM to me. Uh, the owner said that they already threw some parts at it. Obviously, camshaft position sensor, verified timing, you know, the standard stuff. So, that's where we are. Let's take a quick peek under the hood, quick visual inspection, try to locate this thing, and go from there. Uh, while we're still in the scanner, let's just hop into our component test meter. It's a 2 liter. I don't know why it says Reno doesn't matter we're still talking to it fuel injection CMP sensor component information uh, so it's a three wire Hall effect EC applies five volts on the signal wire and conductive sprocket teeth pass through the sensor da 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 zero to five volts the ECU uses the signal to determine uh, Number one cylinder. Create a digital signal in this pattern. Should have no repeats or trends. At CMP sensor connector location. Okay, on top of the cylinder head, right side of the engine. Engine cover will need to be removed to access the sensor. Easy enough. Let's uh, let's find this guy. Under the hood, the DTEC 16 valve. It definitely looks like a GM EGR valve there. Definitely GM wiring. I don't know if it's been poked or prodded. Let's not move too many things here. Uh, I see some exposed wires there. A couple zip ties. There's a, uh, a connector right here that goes down there somewhere. Don't know. <laughs> But uh, I think this guy goes to our camshaft position sensor. Let's just pop off this uh, ignition coil cover real quick. Or plastic thing. And uh, we'll see where it is. Alright, got the little cover popped off. Here it is, three wire sensor. And it looks like it's, you can see this uh, timing belt 
know, camshaft sprocket right there. So it's kind of hard to see, but I think it's just looking right at the teeth of the sprocket. Kind of a really simple design. Now in this case, it's very key. I don't know how it mounts, but the gap between the sprocket and the sensor is absolutely key. Interesting. But in this case, we want to verify the signal integrity at different RPM ranges and whatnot. So let's hook up a scope. We'll actually use the Pico scope since uh, we want, you know, a really nice buffer and uh, detail to see any glitches. We'll hook it up to our signal wire and uh, run the thing. Alrighty. <clears throat> Popped off the half of the timing cover. <laughs> Looks like someone took a little shortcut here. Very easy to remove. <laughs> we see our sprockets. We are gently pierced on the purple wire, which is our signal wire. Now you could back probe it, but I don't want to disturb the connector just in case the problem is there, you know, with the pin or something. So this is the non, kind of non-intrusive, you don't want to disturb anything right now. I uh, want to make sure the wire doesn't get stuck in the belt. Our ground is attached to a body stud there. And we are hooked up on our Pico. So we're on pin 3, violet wire, that's our channel 1. Use that guy. Using the 4425 4 channel scope. That's a red light. Yep, waiting for data. Boom. So we're on a 0 to 20 volt scale. We could go to 0 plus or minus 10. That should be a good scale for us there. So we expect a 0 to 5 volt square wave. Let's fire this beast up. Alright, here we go. So it starts off at 7 volts. Just want to see if I can get it to glitch. Oh, there we go. And it came back. Aha. Uh -huh. Awesome. We can recreate the problem and then it comes back. Sweet. I love it. That's awesome. So now the question is why is this happening? So we just completely lose the camp signal. The computer is not lying. So there's no good, about 50% duty cycle, on and off, and then boop, boop, nothing. So right there, that's a clue. It doesn't just drop off the face of the earth, it actually gives two tries and flat lines. Now my question is, I think we've seen this before, because remember the Acura no start, the crank no start case study where it took me like four trips to nail that thing and we fixed it with a hammer? <laughs> my question is, is the cam moving out far away from the sensor or just losing the signal? Could be as easy as that, you know, the air gap problem. Uh, let's dive under the hood and uh, inspect the cam, maybe rev it up and see if the gap changes. Could be as simple as that. Alright, I got you focused in on the exhaust cam. Right behind it is the uh, camshaft position sensor, that black plastic piece. So I'm going to rev it up and see what happens.
you guys see anything exciting, I'm going to review the footage, see what it looks like. Well, it was kind of hard to tell. I didn't see the camshaft sprocket move in and out. Doesn't mean it, it didn't, but uh, right now we still have two more wires to check. The power and ground. Make sure those don't disappear during our you know, event. And then you know, we'll go from there. If those power and ground are good, the 5 volt reference and the, the constant ground, then uh, I don't know. Could be a crappy sensor, I guess. All right, we got, we're going all out. Three channels. Blue is still the signal. Red is the ground middle wire. You can see it's already been, you can see some copper there. I don't know if it's been sliced or what, but. And the third wire, pink with a black. That is our ignition power. So let's get to our scope and set up our channels. All right, here we go. Three channels running. Red trace is ground, and I set it on a zero to one volt scale. We don't want any voltage in that. Maybe a little noise, you know, less than 100 millivolts. Blue is still our signal, zero to 10. And the green is zero to battery voltage is right there at 12. So key on. So we do have power there. Battery voltage and the ground is, you know, looking fine. Let's start it up. All right, place your bets now. And it's off. And now it's back on. Whoop. There, there's what we need to know. We're not losing power. We're not losing ground. You might think the red is a little noisy here. That's just, you know, ignition spikes. That's still a good ground, it's right at zero. So whenever we lost the cam signal here, right, come on, right here, boom. We still had power and ground. This thing should not, should not drop out like that. And the question is, why did it? Why does it come back? You know, here it, sh it should be back on. The, the revs are back down, and it takes this like delay, <laughs> and finally decides to come back. Interesting. What do you guys think? Well, it's either a bad sensor, or we still have a gap problem. I want to make sure this thing is OEM just because and I mean we're almost done with the diagnosis. Well, I think we're pretty much done with our testing. That's it. The cam sensor is not working properly. Uh, I'm calling the cam sensor. Verified power, ground, signal wire integrity. I wiggled the connector. The gap did not change. Uh, and, you know, the camshaft sprocket doesn't move in and out. Uh, and this is what you get. This is like on startup. It literally didn't work for three seconds. And then it decided to start working. No rhyme or reason, just uh, either stays high or then it starts pulling you know, the signal down the ground like it should. Um, the customer said that he already replaced the cam sensor, crank sensor, PCM, and coil pack. None of those things fixed the problem. I'm going to ask him, did he use an OEM, Suzuki, Daewoo, GM, whatever crank sensor because, or uh, camshaft position sensor, sorry. CMP because apparently sensors are very vehicle specific 
Dorman standard motor products, even Airtex wells, sometimes won't cut it. Sometimes they rebox the original, you know, OEM like Denso or uh, the original manufacturer. Those are fine, but aftermarket sensors just I've been burned by them. So don't use them. I'm going to verify, see if they use an OEM because you can get one for ten dollars on eBay, or you can get one from you know, an online dealer for like 70 bucks. So big difference there. Your car will run seven times better, right? Uh, in any case, we'll see what happens. Uh, but for now, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.